Hey, it's Ryan Moody here, helping you to fish smarter, not harder. This week we're down in Harvey Bay visiting my mate Benny Weston, who's the manager here at Barney's Marine, and we're going to go and have a talk to his mechanic, Matty, about prop selection. G'day Matty, nice to meet you mate. Nice to meet you. Now let's talk some propellers. Okay. Now, now I do find that uh, you know, a lot of people when they buy a boat or they buy a motor, mm -hmm. um, they just take the standard prop that comes with it without thinking about their load and their speed and where they're going, all that sort of thing. Yep. So what are some of the things we should uh, take into account? Well, firstly, how do they read a propeller? Okay, so reading the propeller is quite easy. Is um, Most of the props are stamped onto its side. Um, for example, this one here has got three times 15 and a quarter by 19. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the three stands for the three blades yep. um, of the propeller. Uh, the 15 and three quarter, that's the diameter of the of the blade. Yep. And the 19 is the pitch of the blade. Pitch. Um, it all depends on the load of the on the boat. Um, to a lot of a lot of customers um, say we don't we're not achieving the right amount of RPM with the with the boat. Because each motor has a recommended rev high rev range. Yep. Yep. So that's correct. A lot of customers we fit a 19 pitch on there, um, depending on what the boat is and all that stuff. Most of the time, when the, when a customer comes in for the first time, um, we, and they're looking at buying a, a new motor, we go, okay, we need to look at the boat and see what kind of load you take in each day. Yep. What kind of eskies to how many people you take on board, how much fuel you take. Yep. Whether you, whether you fish alone as well. Or? Well, that as well. Yeah. Like, that all counts into it as well. With also when we talk about propellers, with you, you got aluminium. Yep. and you've got stainless steel. Yes. And what's the benefits there, mate? Okay, so um, aluminium is really good for up in the creeks and et cetera. Yep. Um, where there's a lot of snags, rocks. Rock bars particularly. Yes. Um, we see a lot of customers where they hit um, hit objects and all the time. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully most of them have got insurance. Yep. <laughs> um, because they do a fair bit of damage. Yes. Um, with aluminium props, most of the time if you hit something, it normally takes a chunk off the blade. Yep. Um, where compared to a stainless steel prop, if you hit something, it won't actually chip the blade, but it can actually damage the gears inside the gearbox. Gearbox, yeah. Yes. Yeah, because it's got no give. Uh, the aluminium is basically the give when you hit something. That's it. it. It's nice mm. soft material. Yeah. Where the stainless material is a lot, a lot harsher. Yeah. And um, people don't have to buy a new prop after they chip it or damage it. Most they, you can get them fixed up pretty well, yes. can't you? Long so, as it's, long as it's not chip right down the yeah, hill or something like that. That but, as well. Um, yeah. Like a lot of um, manufacturers, like a lot of engineering places, can fix the prop mm -hmm. um, to bend like new. Like if you've taken a chunk out of there, they'll just tick that up nice and neat and then just cup it to make it suit and all yep. that stuff. That's why a lot of people use aluminium props because yep. it's just nice and soft. Okay, mate. So uh, with a stainless propeller, what's the main areas where people should use those? Open waters? Yeah, open waters is the best thing for stainless steel props. Yep. Um, because of their, their performance and all that stuff, they don't have as much flex as an aluminium prop. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no objects where you're going to be hitting sandbanks, etc., rock bars, and all that stuff. Yeah. Where up in the creeks you are. Yeah. Um, stainless steel prop is, like I said, is better for offshore work. Yeah. Um, for in your bigger horsepowers. Yeah. Um, is always good. You can run them on a the smaller horsepower. Um, but you just got to be a bit wary about it as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I run a creek boat uh, well, several over the years, and I've always gone stainless. But I'm not one of those people that go up the top of the creeks and fish for jacks. Yeah. All my work is sort of open, open areas, and I know the local waters like the back if of you know my hand. So that's the best. That's thing. why I've stuck with stainless in the creeks. But yes, yeah, definitely for people getting into it out there, until you really know your local area, mm. it's best to go stick with the aluminium. That's the best yeah. way. And with the stainless steel props. Uh, they do change it slightly in the diameter and pitch size. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're looking up upgrading from an aluminium to a stainless steel prop, you just got to play around a bit with the diameter and the pitch as well. Um, a lot of manufacturers do a return. Um, if, the, if the prop's not damaged or anything like that, they can return it for a small charge and all that stuff. And yep. that's the best thing about buying a one off your local dealer. So mate, also, how does the pitch affect the fuel economy of an engine? Okay, so having too big of a pitch of a prop on your boat, can affect your fuel economy because the engine is working harder means yep. you're going to burn more fuel. More fuel. Um, if you're only achieving only 5,300 rpm mm. um, instead of achieving your ultimate 6,000 rpm, mm -hmm. the um, engine is working harder means you're burning more fuel. More fuel. Um, at the end of the day, it costs you more in the back pocket. Yeah, exactly. And um, especially if you're taking a load of people as well. That as well. And mm. so by having the correct pitch prop on your boat mm. and the correct rev range, and you go dependent on your load. Yes, 
it yeah. will affect your fuel economy dramatically. And yeah, by and by backing that pitch off, when you do take, if you are a person that takes big loads or yep. lots of fuel on board and do trips offshore, it's going to affect your top end speed a little bit, doesn't it? But it's not that's not a really big issue when you're saving a few dollars in fuel. That as well. Um, like if you're taking a massive load and you only got only got a 21 pitch prop on it instead of mm. going back down to around a 19 or a 17 pitch prop. Yeah. Then yes. Um, in your load as well. Uh, if having too big, like you got full fuel, t fuel tank of fuel, um, two big air skis, two four blokes on board, ice, ice, cartons of beer, that as well. <laughs> um, there's always a weight that comes into it as well yeah. regarding the fuel economy and pitch. Cool. And if a motor is working harder than it should over a long period of time, are there any uh, things in the motors that sort of yeah, can so play it up can a actually bit? can affect your compression of your motor. Yep. Um, to valves, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so yes. Now, mate, also three-bladed props, four-bladed props. Yep. What are the things governing that and where should people use either? Okay, so with um, three-bladed props, it's really good for like single mono holes mm -hmm. um, where you've got a single engine on the back of it. Yep. Uh, where a four-bladed prop is really good for like cats, etc., where they want to get more transom lift to get the um, cushion of air underneath them to make them work better. Yep. And all that. Um, four-bladed props are also really good for heavy mono holes, um, like for a Uranus 7 metre mark, yep. 7 to 8 metre mark, mm -hmm. where they've got twin outboards on the back of it and it's quite heavy. Um, it might be worth actually giving it a go on a four blader prop on, yep. on your next uh, purchase of purchase. motors and all that stuff. Cool. And basically the four blader, because it's got the, the extra blades, it's giving more grip in the water, which tends to make them, that's what gives you the, the extra lift in yes, the transom. Yes, that is correct. So yeah. it actually gives you more tr um, transom lift. Lift. Um, makes the boat perform that little bit better a little and bit all that better. stuff. Yeah, yes. especially if you're punching into a good sea, that That's becomes well, very important. Like that extra prop, yeah, can help and all that stuff a fair mm. bit. Um, and would that, would that affect fuel economy if the boat is able to rise a little bit higher rather than sinking down a little bit in the transom? You will get better fuel economy Yeah. Um, but with the, the four-bladder props. But yes, it is better on fuel economy by the reports that I've heard. In conclusion, mate, so what should people do to get the right prop for their boat? Okay, my suggestion would go see, go have a chat to your local dealer, um, uh, tell them a bit, a bit about your boat, what kind of load do you carry and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and they'll suggest the best prop to, to suit you. Normally what you can do is um, they order a few different props in, mm -hmm. if you're looking at buying a brand new motor, yep. in they'll order a few different props to suit that one. So for example, they might order a, a 19, a 17 or a 21, yep. and perform across there, and which one will perform the best on the load that you take and etc. So there you go guys, selecting the right propeller can be a little bit of a tricky situation, so make sure you go and see your local dealer to get it right. If you like this little tip and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and if you only want some special tips we send out via email only, head on over to our website www.rhymedifishing.com and sign up for free email updates. Get into the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter, and we'll see you next time.